Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad to hear this Friday morning. Getting ready for a big weekend in outdoors. I know a lot of y'all have so many plans, you just don't know which one to choose from. But anyway, make sure you just enjoy. Be, be safe out there and just enjoy the outdoors and enjoy your company with your family and friends. Now, the weather today is going to be nice. It's, they're calling for a little bit of rain off and on, but it's not going to be, it's not going to bother us. A high of 83, low of 69, and water temperature is still at 78 degrees. Take a look at our river readings brought to us by Mountain Dew. Get out and do. Apalachicola Blunt Sound is right at 8 foot and about to level off. This is good, good fishing there. Now, you know, a lot of times, let me talk about that real quick. The, the river readings are, uh, we on the big river, folks on the eastern side of the viewing area, uh, the folks up on the northern part of the fishing area like it around 8 to 10. The folks down on the lower end like it around 4 to 6. I've always noticed that. So uh, they all they all pay attention to it. Though I was talking to a guy the other day. He loved it right around between 8 and 10 is when he went fishing on the northern end of the big river. Uh, take a look at the Choctahatchee at Caraville. Right at five foot and just flat level like we said yesterday, level out for the whole weekend. And, and I think folks over there just like it anywhere, <laughs> they, unless it's really way out of the banks. But it, they uh, they like to fish off the Choctahatchee. Our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. Another great day of tides. It was high this morning right around 2 a.m. And then it's going to be low this afternoon about 2 p.m. So we've got a 12-hour swing there and it's going to start coming in. The wind now is coming out of the east-southeast at about 8 today, and tomorrow is going to be coming out of the east about 6, so about the same wind pattern today and tomorrow. All right, let's take a break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. We want to get some more good pictures, and I uh, appreciate it. I'll get some off my, off my Facebook buddies, and they'll get y'all send me a lot of them too. So this one right here, guess what? We're back with the snakes. This is Raylan, Raylan Smith. Want to know what kind of snake is this? Y'all look at it and tell me before I tell y'all what it is. What kind of snake is that? That's a good snake. Uh, what we call a corn snake. Uh, now that's a good snake. You don't want to, you don't want to hurt it. In fact, you want to reach down and pet it and talk to it and welcome there because it's going to eat all kind of rats and everything around the house. And good, good snake. Now, uh, <laughs> Gail wants to think the same thing, but I promise you that's a good snake there. So Ray Lynn, don't bother it. All right, how about, how about our buddy uh, Billy Grantham up there? He, not very big, but on a, now Billy's one on the right. Not very big, but on a brim buster he is. And he's got a great point there. You fish lightweight, it could be salt water or fresh water. You fish lightweight and you can really get some good action and some good uh, good catches on a, on a, something like a brim buster. So good job, Billy. Proud of you. All right, again now, we're just two weeks away. This is the, we've talked about it before, the 13th annual Elizabeth Bodoff Memorial Redfish Tournament. Well, we, uh, I was thinking, she, I think she was three years old when she, when she drowned. And so she'd be around 16 or 17 now. So let's help this, uh, help our young people, help this family, help the young people learn how to swim. And this is a raffle. If you don't want to fish it, you can buy raffle tickets. You can win a kayak right here, or you can win a, uh, right here, you can win a 500, that's pretty good, right? A $500 Sunjammer gift card. You're talking about buying some Christmas stuff, man. And uh, here it is right here, and $35 entry. And if you want to sponsor somebody, I know several, every year I get people who want to sponsor. If you want to fish it, I've got a young person who want to fish it, I think we can find some sponsors for you. Okay, the Boys and Girls Club. <laughs> How about our buddy Victor Hasco? We had not heard from Victor over here in a while. Victor's been working hard, but he took some time off. He and Sheila, his wife, and uh, they went, went fishing over th right off 30A. And good job. Good job, Victor. Uh, there he's got another one. We gotta get him back on the show. Tell us what's going on over there in South Walton. And here's a benefit of fishing in the afternoon. It's the same fishing trip. And uh, Sheila took a picture of that really beautiful sunset on the Gulf of Mexico. It's just, uh, that is just downright beautiful nature right there. I was reading this. This is interesting now. This is, uh, this is in my CCA book, Coastal Conservation, but 
basically what they're doing, they're trying to uh, raise flounder, and it's really hard to raise flounder. I, I did some research on it, and the, the water temperature has got to be, you know, just right because it, you know, the, a lot of them are born and <laughs> or hatched out. But it, says, it goes on to say, you got the water temperature has got to be stable in the upper, the mid to upper 60s, between 65 and 70, for a period of time. If not, you'll lose the whole, the whole and they've lost. It's been trial and error for those folks out there uh, raising these flounders. So I'm gonna keep up with that. that that'd be cool to stock a place with flounder. You know, we stock redfish and all, but nobody's ever fooled with flounder. So I like that idea. Trevor Taylor, our red fishing, uh, kayak uh, red fishing champion right here, Trevor Taylor, got his son with his first bass. That's a framer there, good one. Okay, now, uh, we wanna, this, after today, we're going out, I'm, I'm a good buddy of mine's coming into town and and we're going to, he's actually bringing, <laughs> bringing me a deer stand from up there in Georgia, uh, Bob Thomas, a good hunt buddy, he's coming down and, uh, and, and we're gonna take it up to my granddaddy's place and put it together. So I'm gonna spend a day in the woods putting together a, a tree stand and I'm, I'm excited about it. I wanted to, originally I was gonna put it on my land, my acreage up there around Alpha, but folks, I still can't get back there with the trees and all. I still cannot get back there where I hunted it even two years later. I, I've worked on it and uh, worked on it hard, but I still can't get back there. So we're gonna put it out there. So I'm looking, so I, I was looking at some of these uh, uh, do it yourself deer stands and I, you know what that little I, I love looking at them I, so I, I've got three or four pictures I want to share with you I don't know if ours is going to look like this uh, I know ours ain't going to look like this but this is just some across the country people send in and I just we talked about it before I just really enjoy seeing them and this is an old farm trailer and it's wooded you know got the door on the right you step up to it then you got the windows there I just I love people's creativity in, in doing these deer stands and here uh, this one here this is sort of high tech. When you get a bobcat or something out there lifting it up and you got those frames and everything, look at those windows. That, that's just a, uh, that, that's a little too much for me, but some folks really, uh, this is more like me, <laughs> find two trees and, and uh, you really don't even want to put nails in trees, but what they did, <laughs> I make a walkway and get the ladder going up to it and I guess that'll work too. And for a few years, one tree grows faster than the other one. Okay, and then, uh, and then another, another forklift, I, I had to take two looks at this picture because I'm thinking, what's it trying to do, sit on the ladder? And I think they're measuring the height of the ladder because here's how it ended up. They were able to put it together with it sitting in the field out there. And this is a well, well-built tree stand. Look at the base of it, and here's the back side of it. That, that's a nice one right there. And, and okay, but here, okay, here's one of my favorites. This is, this is a dad and a 10-year-old daughter. They just drive the truck out in the woods, okay? And then they they get the camo, she gets dressed up, they put the tent in the back of the truck, put the camo over the truck, and she's looking out the window. She's, she's ready for that big buck. And here she is, there she is right there. And what's the first thing you notice about this picture? Look on her leg there. You see the phone? Is that not teenage <laughs> or preteens in a tree stand with the phone? And she's looking, I thought I was multitasking. I got a kick out of that. So. Uh, good, good job on it. All right, let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Uh, on Monday's show now, we're going to have a video. The whole show is going to be a video. It's going to be a great video. Last Saturday, I was able to go up to, we were in northeast Holmes County, uh, sort of, actually northwest, I believe, Holmes County, uh, northwest of Bonifay up there, almost not too far from Alabama. And uh, the Bunkhouse Ranch, I was invited up to film some uh, a hunt, a special hunt up there on, at Bunkhouse Ranch. And it, was a, it turned out real well. Had four hunters and we spread out. I was able to get in the stand and film some of it. Great footage. And you're going to enjoy Monday's show and get you in the, in the mood to get, get out in the woods and all. So, so uh, something to look forward to this weekend. Now, I also got this question here. One of our loyal viewers, Greg Taylor, I've talked about him before. Greg said, hey, Winston, on Tuesday show, the photo was taken. Remember, I showed the Bill Shields little uh, pictures, a little three-minute uh, thing sent to us by Bill Shields. And he said, on the next or last photo, I, I saw a, it, the picture, and it looked like a badly injured leg with something sticking out of, out of it or something infected or maybe a catfish spine. I couldn't tell, but it looked terrible. What was it? 
if you remember, Bill Shields, uh, uh, maybe I started a year ago, maybe two years ago now, he, he pulled in some catfish. He got stuck in his hand two different occasions, and that catfish uh, a spine went in there, and it, it really, that barb, we get got infected. It was so painful, but that was a picture of it. Uh, so I, I sent Greg back an email showing the picture, and uh, that really, that really hurt him. I mean, it, it was. I remember when it happened. It got infected. And when you get fended all by a fish, those fins are, are poisonous. So keep that in mind. Speaking of fishing, I was. I ran across something. And, uh, you know, I went through a, a long period of time where I collected a lot of old fishing tackle and all kind of memorabilia about the old fishing I, and it goes back to my roots as a little kid walking with my dad into old, this old country tackle tackle stores and uh, Harold's bait and tackle on, on the way to Lake Talquin. But anyway, long story short, I just had this memory of, you know, hanging around my dad at a tackle store. So uh, I started, Gail and I, and Gail had the same memory as her dad fishing Lake Talquin. So we collected fishing lures for a long time, but I run across different things and this kind of memorabilia. This right here, I'm gonna show you a picture of it in a minute. This is this is a hook collection, okay? In fact, let me show you what I, I got a close up of it here. Uh, Mustad and Son Fish Hook Manufacturers, folks, it was established in 1832 in Oslo, Norway. Now, is that not cool? This is a display you would have at a tackle store, and the Mustad and Son. And look at the numbering. A lot of people understand the numbering. Uh, number one hook, the third one from the right, number, that's the number one hook. As it gets smaller, the numbers get larger, sort of. But then if it gets, the hooks get bigger, you add a zero to it. So that's one alt, two alt, three alt. So when people are talking about the size, that's the hook size. That's how you tell the size. But this display here is special to me because uh, I, 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 don't, I don't remember. I think I found this in a, somewhere around Atlanta. But... Uh, I, I keep it in a plastic bag and all, but one of my goals, when I, when I started doing the show, I, I wanted to backdrop and all at one time, make it look like an old bait and tackle store, and we still may do that at Studio B. Could we do that, Jeff? I think that would work. Uh, we don't get a lot of, we, we may work on that. No, Jeff don't have anything else to do. <laughs> and so, anyway, I, I was looking up uh, Mustad and son. This is, it was started by, in fact, I got a picture. You know, I found a picture of my, here, here's the, Here's the sun right here, okay? This is in 19, uh, I, I think the 20s or something, over in Oslo, Norway, and he was, uh, but I looked up the history of the company. Like, it started in 1832 now. That speaks volumes of the longevity. They still make quality hooks. It's like a little company. It went through six, gener six generations, folks, six generations of, of uh, I try to keep it protected, until 2011 and the and this seventh generation sold it. <laughs> Can you believe that? They sold it to an investment firm, but I, I, w I was so impressed with them. They, they made little nail, all kind of metal stuff. They had all kind of challenges. I read, reading on the history of it, it was, it was Ole Mustad and the son was Hans. <laughs> and uh, can you imagine in Norway putting all that stuff together? But you know, the Scandinavian countries had a lot of fishing and boat building history and heritage also. So they knew what they were doing. But those, they, the reason they lasted six generations because the quality of those mustad hooks. I know a lot of y'all get these little brim hooks and the little wooden containers and all. So uh, that that company there was well done, and I, I sort of laughed uh, when I read about it last night because most wealthy uh, families, uh, the first generation, you know, gets wealthy off their inventions and really hard, hard work, and usually it's the third generation of the family that sells the business and you know rakes in all the money. That one lasted six generations, so. I thought that was cool, and uh, anyway, I just like to throw stuff out, out a lot of that. So it was a, uh, it was mustad, mustad. Oil. Okay, now I uh, got some more stuff. I'm gonna run out of time. I think I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to draw. One thing I, I, I was gonna talk about, and I'll talk about it next week, getting our food plots ready. Some people have already started on it. I know some hunters. I've talked to a few of them. They've already getting out there now. You know, turning the soil up, and and uh, some people are doing it this weekend. I know some of these hunt clubs are. Are sort of cleaning up and all, and getting ready to plant food food plots. Any, any you know, any time now is a good time. It's according to what you're planting, so keep that in mind. And we're going to be fooling around some, show you some things. A lot of people now are just getting to see where you just throw it, broadcast it out if your soil is ready. So we'll be talking about food plots some next week and get some expert advice from some folks who've been doing it. All right, let's get set for our drawings. I've got a lot of 
Yeah, so on the nicest emails, some folks went down to Tarpon Dock the other day, said the folks were down there so nice, and they, were, they, were just, they promised them they they're going to come back and shop with them and get some good, fresh seafood. And it, it's been, it, they've been caught some nice fish lately, the commercial guys have. They've really had some good catches. And I guess after the storm, you know, it's still stirred up. All right, let's, but let's go to Los Anahitos. Los Anahitos, and the winner of that's going to be a $25 gift certificate. And this winner, all the way from Westville, Brittany Cruz. So y'all can come down one weekend, the Cruz family, and enjoy that. And you can dine outside now. You know, they got a covered patio back there, so I feel pretty safe about that. Now the $20 gift certificate to Tarpon Dock Seafood. And that winner, all the way from Weewall, Chris Upchurch. Okay? And now the Big Red Snapper. Be good cooking this weekend with Big Red Snapper. And the winner on this one, all the way from Parker. How about a Houston Taylor? Houston, you, you deserve a big old red snapper, as much as you fish. Uh, all right, so that's our three winners right there. So we're going to take a break. We'll come back with our famous Friday fishing forecast. Okay, welcome back. Let's get started. We've got a lot to cover. Well, let's, let's go start with fresh water first. And also, let's do something different. Let's start on the eastern end of our viewing area. I, you were talking about creek fishing and fishing these small rivers and the big rivers and all. It's a great weekend for it. And I think about some of the really unique places we have here in the Panhandle I want to share with you. And let's start down, way down here in Carabelle. Okay, keep everything in the center of the screen. That's Carabelle and Sea Quarter. We talk about that a lot. Talk to them on the phone. But let's go, let's go up the river. Okay, and let's fork off to the left. That's what's called the New River. And there you're talking about, now you're going in the heart of Apalachicola National Forest. Follow this river up here, and folks, it just don't get any, any wilder than, than this. It re really doesn't. And you, you know, and uh, I, I want to show you some of the areas here. I mean, look, look, this is all forest land, all forest land. Okay, up in the left-hand corner, Sumatra. So you see where we are? We're talking about Wright Lake. And then you're talking about we want to do some good brim fishing by going up the river, and there are just some areas here. And if you're going to, okay, right here, this is where I want to go, right here in the center screen. Uh, the primitive campsites. There's one. They've got them numbered one, two, three, four. But they're all on the. They're all on the. Uh, uh, Alligator Creek goes into New Creek. But anyway, if you're gonna, if you're gonna uh, hear or see a Florida panther, it's going to be around one of those primitive campsites. And if we do have them, it's going to be in the heart of Apalachicola National Forest. And they said we don't have any more, but I still, I still think we do. Anyway, I, I digress. Let me get back to fishing. So any of these rivers, then go over here, over here to. Uh, Let's go. We're going to work our way west off East Point, then going up in the upper end of the feeder creek. You got Whiskey George. This is Whiskey George right here. Don't tell you, but Whiskey George Creek. And then you got all these rivers the St. Mark's, okay, and the Little St. Mark's, okay. All these areas in here, all, the, all these creeks, and right here, these are going to be some really good fishing. So, all the freshwater creek. And then you have the lakes on St. Vincent Island. We talked about those. Uh, that's just some unique places. So anyway, and then going all the way over to the western end, uh, we've got Black Creek off the Choctahatchee. Uh, we've got uh, there's so many creeks going in the Choctahatchee River too, and, and we'll get to those. But let's, I just want to, I wrote down uh, Depot Creek. I wrote down Depot Creek. Let's go to, we've talked about Depot Creek before, going into Lake Wimico. And here it is, here it is right here. Had some, had some talk to guys this week who's had good luck on Depot Creek. And they, they sometimes go out to Lake Wimico. I haven't heard a lot of good reports from Lake Wimico. Jeff and I are going to go there pretty soon and when we get a break and fish Lake Wimico. But uh, the reports I've got, uh, well, whatever the wind's doing, you just can't get out there in, on small boats and all. And uh, I've got some good reports from Depot, but not a lot from Lake Wimico yet. Okay, they're still, uh, they're still in the middle of the lake. All right, now, uh, moving on to, uh, I'm going to run out of time, Black Creek, I mentioned that, Carabelle River. All right, let's go to, let's go to the uh, saltwater really quick. Another weekend of snapper season. Saw a lot of catches last week. Didn't see a lot of really big snapper, but we, did, we saw some, some good, everybody, almost everybody limited out, which is not hard to do when you're going to catch two. But it, it's always good to say, hey, yeah, we limited out. And a lot of mangrove snapper being caught. I've got five, five fish, uh, snapper, the mangrove, and of course the mullet, mullet. Uh, I saw some pictures of guys uh, smoking some mullet the other day, and I thought that was really, really cool because now you can catch a bunch of them. Uh, number three fish was the flounder, 
the founder, I talked to some people who went back behind Shell Island, and usually that's a good place to go, right in here, right in the center of the screen, uh, right on the back side of Shell Island, usually a good place. Also, up here off Beach Drive, this is a good time of year to go off Beach Drive because they headed out. So if you want to go flounder fishing or flounder gigging, the good places to go. But uh, the report I got, one guy I talked to, he just didn't have much luck, he and his buddy. The other one was redfish, and number four, and number five was trout. So those are all going to be good. I think uh, we showed a snook last week, and snook was caught up here in Grand Lagoon, in that area there. Let's keep going west. Uh, it's going to be, West Bay is going to, should be really good fishing coming out of the creek. Should be, we've got an east wind coming tomorrow. So uh, fishing right here, coming down either, either the creeks, that east wind. You can hug the shoreline there to the right. That's going to be good right in there. It'll be, I guarantee it'll be some nice red fishing trout caught right there tomorrow. Uh, go down to Intercoastal. I haven't gotten any reports on the Intercoastal lately. And in, in the West Bay and up and towards uh, Freeport and that whole area, the Shotahatchee River system is going to be in good shape. There are going to be some fine fish caught over there. Also, uh, again, the guy's going to be throwing some mullet, some mullet net and cast nets right up here. Around this Glen Brady Park is a good place to just go out there and just you know relax and have a good, good time. You can fish off the bridge down there uh, and fish off the rocks. That's just a good area over there. In Jolly Bay, it's going to be good. But with the river, you got Black Creek, Mitchell River, and all all those sections right in there. Those areas right there are going to be really really good fishing. So uh, going on over toward Destin, I haven't got a report from Destin. I know I do know that they've got to be catching a lot of snapper there. And the, the Mid-Bay Bridge should be holding some snapper, but I haven't gotten any reports, but it should be holding some. We're going to run out of time again. We've had a, we've had a really good week here. I, we've got a lot, of, a lot of feedback, and I'm trying to catch up. If I haven't answered you, you know, send it to me again. I apologize, but I'll try to get a hold and talk to everybody uh, I can. Thank you all for watching our show. And this weekend now, try, I say this every weekend, but really try to get out. And if you don't do anything else, just get out and walk around in somewhere in the woods or, or close to the water somewhere. And enjoy the outdoors and get some fellowship with your friends and family in the outdoors. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the outdoors and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.